Hey, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So on this one, I've removed the pagination thing we were doing there. So just find out which plugin we had that uh, pager class and remove it. Okay, so here I have a few fixes we need to do. So I've list listed them here, not in any particular order. Now we're going to do these before we go to our command line tool so that we can create something to speed up our plugin creation process. Okay, so over here, I'm going to start with OB start here. So OB start is a, a function that starts the output buffer. So this OB means output buffer. This is what we used in the app class here. When we said OB get contents, that gets from the output buffer. Now, what I forgot is that uh, sometimes on certain systems, you can actually disable output buffering. So this process may not work as intended. So if you're getting an error like uh, header, headers already sent, just know that um, uh, maybe I should explain that uh, error a little bit. Or in case you're not having that error, that's fine. So the best thing to do to solve this problem here is to put OB start right about here. So I'm going to say OB start there like so. So now I avoid doing this, the OB start, because in fact, let me just explain a little bit about the buffer so that you understand what I'm trying to do here. So what happens normally is on your server here, you when you request a page, so your PHP will start running that requested page and uh, evaluating the PHP. Now in the process, sometimes the PHP will echo something, whether it's empty space or uh, some text, whatever it is, that will be stored in an output buffer. So output buffer is just a memory location where that information is stored before it goes to your uh, the user's browser as a page. So the output buffer stores a string, which is HTML. And this is what we are doing here. Uh, let me come back here. This is what we are doing here because we know that in the before view here, we can just, we can actually echo some content, which is HTML. And so we grab that content and then we compare it with the content here that's what we are doing here just to know whether something was loaded to the page or not so we are grabbing content from the output buffer before this and then comparing after so i think i explained this in a previous video so uh that's all fine right but it's very possible that you can switch off the output buffer this is the output buffer here and usually when the output buffer is full it will be flashed to your browser, which is here. So if this becomes full, the information is flashed or sent to your browser, and then new information is loaded as the PHP script is running. Now it's very possible to switch this buffer off and bypass it. That way, um, information goes directly from your server to the browser without the output buffer. And you have to keep in mind that every time uh, a request is made, the first thing to be sent are what are known as headers. So this is information about maybe the server and what's going on and stuff like that. So headers will be sent first. Now, if the headers are sent to the browser, there's no way the server is going to edit those headers that have already been sent. This is why if you don't have output buffering turned on, okay and then you echo something right so there's no output buffer then you echo something so let's say you echo something on line one here once you do that echo the headers will be sent because this is the first time information is being sent to the browser over that request so headers will be sent over here to the browser and once headers are sent you cannot modify them obviously so now if it turns out that on line 10 or something, you are trying to redirect the page using header location. So this is what we are doing with this function called header. Where is this functions? 
There's a redirect function we created. Where is that? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Or have we already created it? Because it's very possible. Okay, there it is. So as you can see with this redirect function, we are modifying the header because this is the header function and it creates new headers. So when we modify the headers to tell it, okay, this should go to this page, we are essentially redirecting our page. Now imagine you write redirect. Uh, let's go to app here. Let's say, for example, here I echo something, right? Whatever it is. And then down here, I decide, oh, after doing some processing, I decide, okay, this is the wrong page I'm on. Or maybe it's the right page, but it's done processing. But now after processing, let's say somebody submitted a form and you want to redirect them to another page. So here I will put a redirect function like so. Now the problem is going to occur because... If I echoed something here, it means headers have been sent to the browser. So if I try to redirect, this will fail because there's no way those headers can be modified since they're already on the browser at that moment. So you're going to get an error saying cannot redirect, etc, etc. So we can test that out right now. Um, let me mute the OB start here for a second. So here I want to redirect to maybe the products page, which I know does not exist, but we can still redirect. So I'll echo and redirect. So let's try that in action. Let me refresh. And it says, oh, the page isn't redirecting properly. Okay, that makes sense because we are redirecting. Okay, let me just write some other headers, right? Let's just go, instead of redirecting, let's just do header and then just say content type. It doesn't really matter what type of headers we modify here. I'm going to say uh, text plain like that. Okay, so I'm just trying to modify headers after I do the echo. So if I uh, refresh... Oh, this is what I get. So this works just fine because I have output buffering turned on. Okay, so let me come back to here and do die over there so that it doesn't go any further. So I'll refresh and that's what I get, right? And also I can modify the header. So now that I've modified the headers, you can also see... Okay, wait a minute before, let me remove that. You can see that uh, this is not being processed as HTML. It's being processed as text because that's what I've told the browser to treat it as. Content type is plain text. If I remove that plain text header, you will see that it's now HTML. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, if I go to my uh, ZAMP control panel, right? Let's go back to control panel here for a second. I want to modify my php.ini file here. And I'm looking for output buffering here. Oops. Be careful not to <laughs> not to type something by mistake like I just did there. It's a good idea to make a copy of your php.ini file before you make corrections because it's very easy to mess things up. So let me look for output buffering here. So there it is. This is not where the setting is. The setting is right here. So here there is 4096, right? So let's keep that in mind. But I'm going to change it to off. That way we switch output buffering off. I'll save that file and then uh, stop Apache and start it again. So now there's no output buffering. So I expect to get an error, I hope. Yeah. So now I get an error. You see it says, warning, cannot modify header information. Headers already sent by output, and it tells you where the, um, the output happened in the app.php file at line 12. That was the first time uh, here. That was the first time output was sent. So you cannot send output and then try to modify headers that have already been sent. So this is what happens here. So in case you're getting an error like this, you can fix it by turning output buffering on. So we can do that by going back there and turning it on in the php.ini file or what we can do is we can say ob start. So I can say ob start over here like so to start the output buffering. 
Let's hope that works. And as you can see, it actually does work because then it switches on the output buffering here and you can do your thing down there. So either way, you can either to solve that problem, you can either switch on output buffering here so let's go back and find output buffering again and switch it back on to 4096 here, which is the amount of memory that that's the size. You can increase that size if you want. Uh, if you've got your system has more RAM, that is. So let's save that. Let's stop Apache and start it again. So for the sake of those um, people who may not know or may not have access to the PHP, php.ini file we're going to put ob start here and it's important to start it here not any any time before because i don't want output buffering to be on for the controllers that way i can know when there's html being echoed in the controllers because i'll get that error and then i can fix it so that's the issue with output buffering here so let's put that line there just in case on your system output buffering is not turned on this will make sure that it is okay so uh how do we move from here now another way to show you uh what i'm explaining here about the output buffer please bear with me for a second here let's do a for loop for example uh, let me put numbers up to maybe five so let it loop five times and then die over here so it won't go down there so i just want to show you how the buffer works so you can see it in action so here uh, what i would do is so once we load this page it's just going to loop through five times and then echo whatever i is right and let's put a break tag over there like so now obviously looping to five is trivial for a computer this will happen in milliseconds so what we're going to do is force it to sleep one second each time through the loop and then when that happens i want to do an ob flash so to flash is just to send the information so i'm forcing it even though the output buffer is on in this case i'm forcing it to just flash the buffer to the browser every time it loops so in this case what will happen is that uh, once something is echoed it will be stored in the buffer but then we flush the buffer so that will exit and go to the browser then wait and then loop so let me show you that in action so if i refresh now the page you will see what will happen is that um, okay so instead of showing you one by one what it's what's doing is it loads the entire page and then uh so things are not working in short so in order for this to work we have to activate ob implicit flash i think let's try that uh, yeah so that actually works now so as you can see the page is loading section by section so you can actually do this in your um on your website if you want if you don't want people to wait for too long because certain times you find that the browser is just loading and loading and the user isn't seeing anything happening you can actually load your page in segments like this if you want to so you can watch the page loading step by step as the buffer is being flashed all right so that's output buffering 101 for you there now if you don't understand what a function does whatever any of these functions do uh, these functions are just a google search away so you can just do php and then paste that function like that uh, the version with php.net is always better or w3 schools these guys are very good so check that out so here this explains what ob implicit flash does this one will turn implicit flashing on and off that way you don't have to call flash every time so i guess i could have done without this but just doing flash here like so right or be flash and then flash but this works just as well anyway that was just a short description of what the output buffer does so we will leave ob start there just in case for those that have output buffering turned off 
and then uh, yeah that way we can use this without problems on any system all right so that solves one problem so let's remove that guy from there and let's go to the next uh what do we do next the other one is check extensions while we are still here so what i'm gonna do with this is let's uh, add one more file to core here and i'm just gonna say new file let me put some php tags i just want to put one function in here and i'm going to call this one extensions.php so what this function will do here is just to check for extensions so we're gonna say check extensions like that and then immediately we're going to run that function so check extensions check extensions like so so what will happen is as the page is loading we need this to be part of the system so inside the init here right after functions i'm just going to put uh, extensions here dot php like so okay so here we want to check for extensions and what do i mean well, last time you saw when we were creating um, image, when we were doing image cropping, we needed the GD library to be turned on because certain times it can be off depending on the settings in your php.ini file. So it's good to remind the user or the, the coder that GD library is turned off, please turn it on. So in order to do that, you can just check if it's loaded true or false so here i'm just gonna do dd like this and there's a function called extension loaded right then you name the extension in this case our extension is gd like that so we're going to get an answer whether that extension is loaded or not so i'm going to refresh this and you see a one which means true right if i don't load it it's going to be off now we can check this by going back to the php.ini file and I can look for the extension is equal to gd, uh, which is this one right here, right? And if I, for some reason, put a semicolon there, it means, let me save that, it means I have disabled it. And then let me restart Apache. So I'm gonna stop and start the server again and if I now refresh, you see that uh, it shows me emptiness. So it doesn't show me a one. Now I really want to know what data type that is. So I'm gonna use var dump instead. So come back here, refresh. So it returns a Boolean of false if it's not loaded. So it's either true or false. So when an extension is loaded, you see true. When it's not, you see false. Now. The question is, how did I know to type the word GD there? Because it's GD library, you know, I could have easily thought maybe I have to type it like this or something, right? So fortunate for us, there is a way to find out what these extensions are called. So there's a function called, uh, what is that one? Extension get loaded extensions yes there it is great awesomeness so get loaded extensions will bring you an array of all the extensions that are loaded so if i now refresh it shows me all the extensions that are loaded on my php installation so we have uh, mysql driver pdo driver here mysqli pdo sqlite and so on and if you notice here gd is not in this list so if you want to know what the extension you need is called just load it and then look here to see it then you can add it to your list so in this case if i go back to my config and remove the semicolon there save that file i'll close it this time then stop and restart apache then if i now refresh you see now there's gd as part of that list that's how i found out what to call it so you can just disable it and then call it again or you can check what it's called on the extension names there in the php.ini file so this is one way to do it so what we're going to do now is create all the required extensions 
So I'm just going to say inside this function here, I'm going to say extensions. And then let's do this. Now, the reason I'm putting this in a, an external file as opposed to just the functions with PHP, it's just, it's just so this is something you can change a bit often. So it's good to just have a file where you find it without having to go through all the functions. So here we will put one GD, put a comma and put other extensions that we may need. So let's look here. Uh, PDO MySQL, this is important. It has to be loaded because we are using, going to be using PDO. We are using PDO already. And then if you want MySQLi, you can uh, put that as well, etc., etc. So put all the extensions that you want in there and uh, let's give it a shot and check if they are loaded. So all we need to do is go through a for each loop and we are looking at extensions. And then as we don't need the key, we just need the extension itself and then we can do the check. So we're going to say if uh, extension loaded and whatever that extension is at that time. Um, in fact, we just want to know, oh, this is a function. Sorry. We just want to know if it's not loaded. So if it isn't, let's add, uh, let's create a an array called not loaded. I don't need that space. So here, if it's not loaded, we can just add it there. We're going to say um, not loaded like that is equal to whatever that extension is at the time. Okay, so we loop through and check all those that are not loaded. We add them to not loaded here. And then we will say uh, if not empty, not loaded, then at this point, we can do a DD like this and say, uh, please load the following extensions in your php.ini file. Right. So here we get that and then we implode. So I'm just going to do implode. What's the glue that's going to be uh, commas uh, in there. And then the, the pieces is the array not loaded. Alrighty then. So this is what will happen when those extensions are not loaded. Great. Otherwise, it will just bypass and ignore. So in this case, if I refresh the page, oh, wait a minute. Let me remove this here. All right, great. So nothing of that sort. Oh, wait, what's going on? Where is the Is something, did I miss something here? Uh, no, apparently not. I don't see some of the content. Or is it just me? What's happening? Okay, let's go to um, header and footer plugin and uh, there should be a view in the includes here. Head, uh, head of view, footer. Those are showing, I guess. Uh, what do I feel like I'm missing here? Okay, let me just echo here, like so. I just want to see if that will show. Okay, so that's all good, I guess. All right, so things are still working as intended. So now what I want to try is to eliminate the, let's remove the GD library. So find it again, extension GD, and put a semicolon, save, restart Apache. 
and let's see what we get when we try to reload our page. So this is what we get. Please load the following extensions in your php.ini file. And there we go, gd. So great, at least now it gives us a warning when the extensions we need do not exist. So let's put that back. Let me save that, close it, stop and start Apache again. And this time we are good to go. Okay guys, ready, great. So check extensions, done. Now what we need also is the do filter and the add filter functions to be functioning. So let's go back to functions.php. Now the beauty of these is that they're exactly the same as their counterparts. So let's see, where are those guys? So there's add action here. It's exactly the same as add filter. So I'm just gonna paste that. The only difference is this actions variable will change to filter capitalized all the way like that okay so we add a filter there that seems about right and then there's do action so i'm going to copy this do action uh, which is exactly the same as do filter only difference is we return data okay and uh, what we will do here is we have to this function we are running should return information and sent back to data. That's the only difference here. So we'll filter something there and then boom. Okay, great. So do filter, add filter, done. Simple as that. So back here, let's remove these two guys. We're getting close. And let's look at uh, user permissions, right? So we're going to have a user permissions uh, thing going on here. This must be part of the core because this is usually required by almost every um, every app that we're going to make. So I'm going to just say permissions like that. I'll create an array. Uh, I miss that order there. <laughs> so let me put that like so. Uh -huh. And then this will just be an empty array for now. And what will happen is here we are, say, load. Uh, mm, or something, I don't know. Uh, poop. Okay. So. Yeah, as if that wasn't very obvious already. Anyway, so app permissions here will contains will contain permissions, uh, a list of permissions that the current user has, right? So if they can edit users, they can do this and that. So that's what we that's what will be there. Now we want plugins to be able to edit the information that's inside the app permissions because each plugin will come with its own application um, let's say for example i have a user's manager so i'm going to need permissions for uh, specific permissions for that plugin where like edit user add user etc etc because it's user's manager same with a page manager we're going to need permissions like is the user able to edit pages and stuff like that so we don't want those hard coded they should come with each plugin now, since we don't know what plugins will be created and what permissions they come with, we should allow each plugin to be able to edit the permissions uh, uh, array. And we can do that right here. So before we actually load the actual application, because the application starts here, we need to know what the user can and cannot do. So we're going to say app permissions is equal to, and then here we're going to use the do filter um function right do filter because here it's going to actually filter the information that's coming in so the information we are giving it we have to create a hook right the name of the hook so this one we're going to call it user permissions so you can edit this to whatever hook name you want so this is the hook name 
What this means is that whichever plugin wants to edit permissions, they'll have to do that on the user permissions hook, which is the same as, let's say if we're in the plugin.php. If I duplicate like this and then just say user permissions like that, it means whatever I'm doing in here, I'm editing permissions. So in this case, I can do something like this because it's going to accept uh, the current existing permissions, right? So let's put an S. Whatever permissions are already there will be supplied here. And of course, I need to return that same. Filters always need to return a value. Otherwise, you're going to break your code. So add action. Action does not return anything, but filters do. So instead of add action here, it should be add filter like that. And so we are given a set of permissions that exist, and then we return those permissions to continue the cycle for other filters to also use that same information. In this case, the order actually does matter which function gets to uh, filter the permissions first and such. But anyway, what we can do here is then we can modify permissions and say permissions you add because we know this is an array. We're going to say permissions. Maybe you add new permissions like add user or so if you have your application has several permissions, you can just list them there and add to them and then return the result. So now what has happened is that permissions came in. Maybe there were no permissions at that point, And then you've added some and then sent them back to where they were originally. So which means now in the index.php file, this value starts out with nothing. But by the time we finish all the filters run here, there'll be permissions for every loaded plugin currently on that page. So hopefully that's making some sense. And also here we need to supply the original permissions data as the second param like so. So great. This is uh, looking good. Where, where is the... Okay, so this was just an example, but I will leave it there because this is usually always, almost always there per plugin. So I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so close extensions as well. Uh, there we go. So that's the little nugget we're going to deal with for permissions right now. Now that ties into the function called user can, this one right here. So the user can function just grabs uh, permissions from, so we're just gonna need the global app uh, variable here and then check what permissions are there and then check if the current user has um, user can. So for example, when I say user can edit uh, page, here I may have something like edit page when I call this function, right? And then all, all this thing has to do is just check in that list of permissions and see if the user actually is allowed to do things like that. Okay, so we'll leave that there for now. Uh, what else? So we are done with user permissions. Mm, what to do next? Uh, return old thumbnail. So this is a simple one here. Let's go to our image.php function. I forgot something. You see here when we are when we are generating a thumbnail. The problem with this currently is that um, every time, let's say somebody uh, uploaded images that are ten megabytes in size and there are 10 of those images. Every time we load the page, it needs to generate a thumbnail for each one of those. And that's a waste of processing power because if we already created a thumbnail for that particular image, <clears throat> the thumbnail shouldn't change for as long as the image hasn't changed, right? It's still the same thumbnail. So it's better we just return the existing thumbnail to save time instead of having to process that all the time. So all we need to do is just check if the destination file actually exists and then we just return that. So here we will say if file exists destination in this case, right? And then so we're just going to return destination. So simple as that. That's the only thing we needed to add. This by itself will save us a lot of processing power 
because we don't have to keep creating thumbnails every time. Okay, great. So that fixed this one right here. What else do we need here? Um, allowed columns. What did I do with this? Something I thought about. Um, yeah, there's this part where I said allowed insert columns. Now, I want this to be kind of compatible with my old system. So what I'm going to do is this part I'm going to change. So instead of allowed insert columns, let's remove that to just allowed columns. And then we will leave the allowed update columns like that. So just that is what I needed from there. That's all. So let's remove that and done. What we are supposed to do though is, do I have a class somewhere here? So how that ties into everything is, where do I have classes? Is it on the homepage? Okay, so this header footer has models. There's a user model here. Okay, so it doesn't really do anything. So a typical class like uh, one of these will have a protected variable, protected um, table. So this is inside the header footer. Let's use a model. And there will be a table here. In this case, for example, for the user model, the table will be users. And then there will be more protected uh, variables like allowed columns, the one we just created there. So the, the system will check if the model you're using has this variable. So where is that inside model? Did I just model.php? Okay, there we go. Uh, where is this? Yes, it will check if this allowed columns exist and then use it. Just like it will check when updating if allowed update columns exists. So for it to exist, you can do something like this. So this will be typical of most classes. And I'm going to do this. And this one will be update. So they're going to be two of these. So in here, for example, you can put the columns like in, in, in the case of a user's table. I'm sure there will be something like email. Uh, these are columns that you can actually uh, deal with when you can, you can modify when inserting a record. So password, um, date created, these are things. And then you can have a separate one here if you want for things that should, can be edited because maybe you don't want um, date created to be edited, for example, because it doesn't make sense to be able to edit the date created. Um, so in this case, maybe we can have date updated like that as part of the list that things that can be edited, just like uh, we have email and password as well. Those are editable values and so on. So in this case, for example, our class user knows what table it's meant to modify, and that's the user's table. So that's the table variable here. This is the variable that will be used because these users, these uh, classes will always extend um, model like that okay they'll be extending this main model over here so the namespace is inside model so great let's use that so we will need a namespace there and in the same way we don't require direct access so we will put that there as well to prevent it all righty then so and then there's some so user model you can put your comments here all right so this is how a typical uh, model class will look so extends model is this safe though namespace yeah i guess it is 
since they're in the same namespace anyway they should work just fine uh huh what else okay so that's how that will work and so let's remove that now let's deal with um, we're getting closer let's deal with old value okay so this one will be in the functions page now old value is for when you let's say you have a, uh, a login page and you click or a sign up page you click sign up and there's an error and when the page reloads because mostly the page will reload you find that some the information you had entered is missing because the page has reloaded so we're going to create a function that will um, we're going to call it old value of course you can call these things whatever you want this just returns a string uh, let's uh, it's going to require a string key okay uh, what else can you add here default value is that needed yeah maybe string uh, default something like that so what old value is going to do is it's going to give you back the value that was there when we reloaded the page so we can put that to the test if i go to let's say the basic oath Mm. this one runs on every page so there's a view here and i can load a view file actually let me try one that already has a does it probably not uh header footer let's see here plugin okay so it includes a footer view and a header view let's just make sure it includes something in between oh we can go to the basic oath plugin function and just paste it there this is just going to be the um, i'll call it the login.php page so it expects that inside the includes folder so i'm just going to new folder here and say includes so that's in the basic oath um and new file and save and i'm going to call this one login dot view dot php okay great so inside the plugin uh, plugin dot view dot php okay goody so there we are we have that view file so if i add a form this time like this yeah let's say method is equal to post and i have a few inputs in here i'm gonna say this is type text of course and the name will be uh, names are required maybe email like that and yeah, let's put a break tag of some sort so email and password right and then let's put finally a button uh, submit okay great so now if we load this page okay so undefined variable hook online 215 okay let's check that out what's happening 250 right here on add filter oh sorry my bad we need that hook uh where is add filter is the same as add action so i'm just gonna grab everything here and paste and put a boolean return uh yep that should do the trick okay let's refresh there we go so we have our sign up page here and if i submit let me try and put an email here some reason password and then if i click submit what happens is when we re the page refreshes that info is gone so what i can do instead is put our trusty function here on the value like this and say uh, old value like that okay so just another reminder this means php echo so we are echoing with a key the key is email right and then the default value in case that email does not exist you can put a default value there 
if you want to that way that's the value that comes up but let's remove because it's optional let's do that so in the functions.php let's make it functional functional this this function right here so if everything fails we return the default value of course but then here we'll check we'll say if now we're checking this from the post request now it is possible that we may want a different to get it from a different place maybe the get variable and stuff so you can make this multi uh, faceted or something type is equal to in this case it's post so this is a string data type all right so we'll ignore this for now but what we want to do is say if not empty right we are looking into the post variable here and we are looking for that particular key so if that value exists in the post variable let's return it like that and we are using the key like so okay so if not empty that item return it otherwise return the default value it's as simple as that so if i now refresh to resend that data you see i get back my value so it's the same thing we can do with the password um if i go back to the login view i can just copy this value over here and paste it like that now on the default value we can say default email uh, at email.com so that in case everything is empty we can start afresh but if i refresh this you see it shows me oh sorry it shows me the wrong thing because the key should be password here and not email so refresh and there we go so as you can see because the values exist it puts them there but if they don't exist it will put them on the uh, it will put the default value there so it's as simple as that now there's old value there's also old select and old checked so i use three of these guys because um, we have select what is this we have select inputs those drop down thingies and then we have checkboxes as well checkboxes and uh, radio buttons are the same thing so no biggie there so what's happening is all these need to be reset so let me try that on the login view i'm going to put a drop down um, so let's test a drop down here so I'm going to do select and in there I'm going to put a few options. Okay. So this option the main the original value is empty and we just say select something like that. Let's duplicate. This one will be let's say 1. I don't want to complicate things. Or maybe let's do male and female, right? So that it's very obvious. Uh -huh. Okay, so great, male and female. So in this case, what we would do, instead of having value like this, we'll just grab this part here and put it over here, like so. So instead of old value, of course, we have old select. Like that. So what this function does is if there's a match, it will echo the selected keyword because once you type the word selected here, that becomes the selected item. So all it needs to do is echo out selected. So here we'll say this is gender, right? So let's put a name on this. That's gender. So what we need is first of all, the key name. In this case, that's gender. And then we will need to know what value to match with. So on the first one, it's male. On the second one, it's female. But I'm doing double edits here. And then uh, you can put now a default value 
uh, that should start with in case there's a default value that we need maybe male or female that would be the one uh, or the default value is also useful when you have records you're editing a record right and that original value that's in the database becomes like the default value so in this case you would do something like row because that's coming from the row and then gender something like this so so that would be the default value but let's come back here for a second let me change that to female like so okay so if we go back to old we need to account for this it needs to make a comparison so old select and then this is not the default value so there's a key and there's a string for value like that and then default over here okay so if one thing exists if something exists in the um, actually we don't need to check if it exists we just need to check if not empty key yes yes that is required but then if it's not empty we have to check if they match so we're gonna say if the value of the thing in there is equal to our value that we expect which is value then here we return um, yes we return the word selected now it's okay to put spaces around here because we are echoing HTML anyway just in case there's no space on the other side we are protected so we return that selected and that's the default value so there's no way we're going to return default value at any point so let's return an empty string here if all fails and then if uh, so here we're checking if it's empty if not empty but if it is empty we will compare the value and the default value if those two things are the same uh then we do the same thing here so here i'll put an else statement meaning that is empty then we do another if statement which will resemble this one again but instead of the key because this does not exist anymore we will use the default so here i'm going to grab that default if default is equal to value select it so simple as that so let me grab this this is pretty much the same thing with the checked so only that the returned value is checked the word instead of selected okay so blah 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 wait a minute uh, I think it's the same thing <laughs> anyway we will edit it if it doesn't work out now the thing is we have this type is equal to post now sometimes we can put the get variable so that we grab from the get variable instead of the post variable so to fix that issue uh, all we have to do is change this to a variable a variable variable <laughs> it's very interesting so um, I can say the array is equal to um the array is equal to post like that okay originally that's what it is now if type is equal to get instead like so then we swap that to the get variable any other time we keep we stick to the post like so okay and um, then we can grab this array and replace all this with that so this is going to be like a variable variable so it may look wrong to do this but it's actually correct because what happens is this is evaluated first and then array this array becomes equal to that so it's as good as we put that there like so right but then it's changeable because we can put this as well here so a variable variable is very valid code 
I rarely use this. I don't even know why it's turned up here. Looks like the only way, but I think I did something different. Anyway, if you don't like this, you can just use an, an entire statement. You say if type is equal to get, then copy, recopy this same data onto a different one. But uh, yeah, this will work just as well. So let me grab this, paste it here, because I don't want to have more if statements. I already have too many here. I don't want to duplicate the code. Okie dokie. So let's see if things are still working as intended. So there's a selector here. If I select female, for example, and do a submit, you see it stays at female. If I go to male, click, it stays there. But if I reload the page, it's back to the default value. So that's exactly what we want. This, is, this would be exactly the same thing if we had a checkbox. So just for you to be satisfied that this is working, let's add an input of type checked and give it a name of, I don't know, hello. And we'll do exactly the same thing here. I'm gonna grab this and uh, let's paste it over there. And this one has a key of hello. And let's look at the value. The value of this one will either be one or zero, depending on or yes or no, whatever. So it doesn't matter. Let's put yes over there like that. So here we will put another one called no, and that one is no as well. So if the name is the same, I guess uh, this will create some confusion. Let's do hello to there and put hello to there as well. Okay, so if I now refresh, wait a minute, check box. Oh, always in a hurry, right? Bam. All right, so we refresh and those are the checkboxes. If I submit, they're empty, but let me tick one. Yeah, so it doesn't remain the same. So there's something wrong here going on. Value is yes, that's yes. On hello, value is no, that's no. That's because we are calling old select. So it should be odd checked. Sorry about that. Yeah, because it's returning the wrong word there that isn't recognized. Okay, sorry about that again. This always happens when you add uh wait a minute what's happening what is happening mm. undefined variable value on line 334 okay so where is that 334 value this is unknown okay that's great we forgot about that all righty then then we have string value, great. And let's refresh. Okay, so that one is ticked, great. Submit, great, great. It's maintaining, let's tick both and see, great. Okay, so all of that is working. Old checked, old select, old value, which removes this guy over here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so the, the rest of these uh, we can do in a separate video because this one is getting too long. So I will see you in the next one.